inquiry-based approach sparks students' curiosity. Moreover, inquiry-based approach relies upon the idea that individuals are able to learn by investigating scenarios and problems and through social experiences. Okay. Do you have any questions? Okay. So you have mentioned earlier the levels of inquiry. Do you still remember those four levels? Guided, independent. <laughs> okay, so let me help you. Okay, so these are the four levels of inquiry. Okay, level one, confirmation. Level two, structured inquiry. Level three, guided inquiry. And level four, open inquiry. So based on the table, can you say that inquiry level is the same throughout the grade levels? The answer is no, right? In the previous NTOT, we're discussing about elementary level. Now it's junior high school. What level do you think okay, students should exhibit when they exit grade 6? Level 4, do you mean um, bef uh, if they're already in grade 7, they can already identify or choose problem, write the procedure, and investigate to find the solution? I, I think they will also agree that some of our students, even at uh, grade 6 level, they can already do open inquiry and guided inquiry, right? But what's the minimum? Grade 6 students should at least be able to be able to do level 2 structured inquiry. So our students in junior high school when they enter grade 7 they can already do level 2 structured inquiry. Yun yung problema ma'am. Okay. Grade 10 na level 1 pa rin. So there's something wrong. Let's uh, look more closely to each level. Level one of inquiry, confirmation. Students confirm a principle through an activity in which the results are known in advance. Okay. Example of a phrase saying it's an inquiry level one. In this investigation, you will confirm that the rate of a chemical reaction increases as the temperature of the reacting materials increases. You will use effervescent antacid tablets to verify this principle. Using the following procedure records the result as indicated and answer the questions at the end of the activity. So the teacher is already giving the problem, the procedure, and students already know the answer. What will they do is just to confirm. So level one, level one, so elementary level, let us say grade one, grade two, grade three. Inquiry level two, structured inquiry. Students investigate a teacher presented question through a prescribed procedure. In this investigation, you will determine the relationship between temperature and the reaction rate of effervescent antacid tablets and water. You will use effervescent antacid tablets and water of varying temperatures. Using the following procedure, record the results as indicated and answer the questions at the end of the activity. The teacher gives the problem, the teacher gives the procedure, but it's the students who will find out the answer or solution. Inquiry level three, students investigate a teacher presented question using student designed or selected procedure. Design an investigation to answer the question, what effect will water temperature have on the rate at which an effervescent antacid tablet will react? Develop each component of the investigation including a hypothesis, procedures, 
data analysis, and conclusion. Implement your procedure only when it has been approved by your teacher. Remember, teachers should be facilitators. So students will, even though we are giving st the students the choice to write their own procedure, we should check their procedure to make sure they're safe on what they are doing. Okay? And uh, teachers can already give feedback if we, be, if we see there's something not right. So again, for inquiry level three, the teacher gives the problem, the students, yes, make their own procedure and Find your own solution. Then the last inquiry level, open inquiry. Students investigate topic-related questions that are student-formulated through student-designed or selected procedures. Example, design an investigation to explore and research a chemistry topic related to the concepts we have been studying during the current unit on chemical reactions. Implement your procedure only when it has been approved by your teacher. So here in inquiry level four, the teacher let the students choose a problem which is related to their topic, write your own procedure, and to carry out the procedure if it's approved to be able to find the answer or solution. Okay. Moving on. Now, one model of inquiry-based is 5E model. So uh, we'll call this 5E inquiry-based model. You're familiar with this, right? Okay. So may I know what are the stages of 5E? Engage. Explore. 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 Explain. Explain. Elaborate. Elaborate. Evaluate. So I, get, I guess you got correct for all um, I mean you got correct for that certain item in the post test okay, which of the following arrangement is correct for inquiry based okay. now since 5e instructional model is a it's an inquiry based approach it is also based on constructivist theory what does this theory states? Learners will construct their new knowledge based from their experiences. So students come to school not an empty vessel. They already know how the world works works, physical world. Students already know how the physical world works based on their experiences before coming to school. That is their preconceptions. Okay. Then as teachers, we know that we use their preconceptions or what we call uh, schema okay, to design our activities and for our students to learn how the physical world works. These concepts will be their new concepts. However, this is not the final concept that they will remember. They will use their preconceptions and new concepts to build the new concepts that they will carry or they will remember. Not useful. They will throw concepts that are not useful to them. This is where misconceptions may arise. Example in physics. Okay. Students really find difficult to understand the three laws of motion. Okay. Let us, let, uh, we know that if we will push a card, the um, arresting card, it will start moving. Right? But let us say we push it hard, then we'll 
um, release it, it will move, but eventually it will stop. So students will say, force is needed for an object to be moving. However, the first law of motion states that an object which is moving will continuously move with constant speed in the same direction or constant velocity if there are no forces acting on the object or the forces acting on the object are balanced. It means the net force is equal to zero. Pero, teacher, you said no force is needed for the card to continuously move once you set it in motion. Pero nag-stop. Every day I experience that. Sabi ng uh, student. So they will not be able to grasp the idea of first law of motion. Instead, what will they remember? Ah, hindi ako naniniwala dun. Basta, uh, there, you need force for the object to move. So how will we address it? Dito kasi na, lumalabas yun na nag-arise in misconception when they already choose which one to keep, which one to throw. That's why we education stakeholders give our, our immerse our students in different activities for them to find out because our students are critical thinkers they will not just absorb what the all the things the teachers are saying right okay so we immerse them in different activities okay. so that's it five e models based on constructivist theory as uh, the name 5e suggested as the name based from the name of the model 5e there are five stages engage explore explain elaborate and evaluate so we as stake as education stakeholders should understand each stage so that we can prepare activities that will be effective for students to grasp the correct idea and not mis and not to arise misconceptions let's look into each stage engage we hook student interest in the topic or arouse their curiosity with a problem question while checking students preconception if you still remember, you're saying there should be a posted question. Not just introducing the topic or starting the lesson by explaining the topic. We can do this through picture analysis, video analysis, and presenting discrepant events. So we'll tickle their mind for their curiosity to rise. Then for the explore, we put direction in the inquiry and set parameters, have hands-on work, and not allowing students to do whatever they want. So we can do this usually through hands-on laboratory activity. Explain, students present their findings and reasons Feedback is given on their answers and other inputs based on the students' experiences and not just the teacher doing all the talking or explanations. So earlier when I was seated at the back, someone commented that we cannot really go, uh, we cannot really remove the, the traditional way of teaching which is basically lecture, right? So. It's a traditional way of teaching. Are there traditional ways that we are still doing today? Why are we still doing these traditional ways? Proven effective. Are we continuing doing traditional ways that's not, that has no positive impact to us? No. There are things that 
it's better if you will explain it to the students, right? Okay. So, for the 5E, it says here that feedback is given on their answers. So, isn't it sort of traditional? Let us see, there's uh, uh, students are reporting, then you're giving feedback. Why like this, like this? Uh, tanong, why? Tapos ni pa rin nakukuha ni ng bata. Okay. With all the activities you you give, di pa rin makuha. Okay. You exhaust all your resources. Diba? So, siguro it's better if ilalecture ko na lang part na to next time. So, we cannot really go away with lecture type. But, we are promoting that students will do the experience will do the explaining part of our discussion. We can do this through reporting and role play. Next, elaborate. Students use their new knowledge and continue to explore its implications by applying the new knowledge to new situations and challenges, and not just taking tests after discussion. Okay, class, our discussion has already been ended. You already know about malls. Get one half. <laughs> Ganun na agad, test na agad. No. Okay? Students should apply their new knowledge to new situations for them to, uh, to see the importance of what they have learned. That's one. Okay, you, we can do that. We can have another hands-on lab and they can do studies. This is already for college and studies or for fourth year high school. We can have a research, simple research. Here. Evaluate. Using open-ended and application types of assessments and not taking tests after discussion and not only written objective type. So we can give open-ended questions, self-evaluation, demonstration, journal drawing performance tasks. When do we do evaluation? During, after, and before very good mom. So we evaluate our students throughout, not just at the end. Diba? In the uh, engage part, we are already asking questions to the students. When students do activity, they are answering a question or a set of questions. In explaining, we process our students by answering questions. Then, if they do the explore, um, ex elaborate, they're also answering questions. So, hindi lang po sa dulo yung evaluate. It's throughout.